Today I'm joined by Dr. Marla Franco, who is the Vice President for Hispanic Serving Institution Initiatives here at the University of Arizona. You were part of the reason why in 2018 we finally achieved the status of a Hispanic serving institution. Can you just talk about all the work that not only you but many others did and the community did to earn this designation? It's been a phenomenal ride to think that we are several years into this already, but that designation came to be in 2018, and I think it's a real hallmarker of history for the University of Arizona. It's the effort of many, just like you said. There are certainly members of the community uh, regionally that rallied for this, that advocated for this. They certainly wanted to see parity between those in the community as well as those enrolled at the university. And all the outreach and recruitment um, that the university does, right, in all the facets uh, from unit to unit, department to department, across all colleges, really people being committed um, to access, uh, to certainly retention and degree completion of this community. So it's been great to see. It was certainly a long time coming for the University of Arizona, but we're glad to be here, right? Yeah, no <laughs> question about it. Yeah. You're, you're a vice president. Uh, at the university, it brings a certain amount of attention to the work that you do serving our Hispanic students and the community. But if you look at your peers across the country, uh, I know we've spoken many times, you, you don't have many peers that are at this level of vice presidency. So I think you should be really excited and very proud to know that you have probably the only vice president of HSI initiatives right. in the nation. Um, certainly I have probably just a few peers, maybe at least one other person, um, if not two at the very most, who really sit at this level of leadership within their respective institutions that have an explicit focus on HSI initiatives. Most of my colleagues, both you know, a deep and wide network across the nation, are at different levels within the organization, but equally just as passionate and committed to advancing HSI initiatives at their respective campuses. And so it's been wonderful to really develop not only the work here at the University of Arizona and across the state, but to leverage the investment here to serve as a resource and support to my colleagues across the nation who are advancing this work. So having the designation from the Department of Education uh, is a great source of pride and we should all celebrate that every day. But what are some of the more tangible benefits of having the designation? You know, I often say it is what we decide to make of it. What we think about integrating our mission and our values into the designation. And so we have to manifest this work in real ways that matter for the U of A community and the community at large. And so as a result of having a position that allows me to provide that dedication and that intentionality on this work, you know, we've built up a number of programs, initiatives, and capacity building endeavors. Does it uh, allow us to have access to federal funds that we may not have access to if we didn't have the designation? Absolutely. So each year we actually have to go through a process with the U.S. Department of Education. It's not something that we can take for granted. And so we actually have to provide an extensive amount of, of data and rationale to the U.S. Department of Education. And that does you know, permit us to competitively vie for earmarked funding uh, provided by federal agencies that either are explicit to Hispanic serving institutions or ones that are you know, laser focused on really advancing uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and that also, you know, all three of those things are things that we can competitively buy for. So it does open the door for the entire university. Since I've been here, one of the focuses has been to increase our first year retention rate. We've increased it from like 82% to 87.7%. What services do our Latinx students get because we are an HSI? The student experience really needs to be held at the core of this work. You know, all of the capacity building initiatives, while they might engage and focus on uh, training and professional development geared towards faculty and staff, it really is at the heart of ensuring that we have an inclusive and engaged educational environment for our students. Ones where they, certainly environments where they feel like they can thrive, where that sense of belonging is strong, where they can walk on our campus and experience 
experience this institution and not shed aspects of their identity in order to thrive here educationally and professionally, but beyond. We want them to be career ready, graduate school ready. And so as a result, we actually have just a number of partners across campus. Everything from providing you know, additional um, enriching local engagement opportunities um, that allow for experiential learning, that allow for career exploration targeted at our students, bringing the borderlands to fruition as part of the student's educational experience. Those are experiences that are open to all students, not just ones that are restricted to our Hispanic and Latinx population. You were instrumental instrumental in bringing together all of the HSI institutions in the state of Arizona so that you could come together and have meaningful dialogue and exchange of uh, better practices. You were able to organize uh, all of our HSI institutions. Can you just give us a little bit of uh, insight into groundbreaking work you did to organize all of our HSIs in Arizona? A few years ago when we first started out on trying to figure all of this out, right? And this was even a couple years prior to the designation. Right. Um, you know, I probably had um, just a couple um, colleagues in the nation that I could shoulder tap to ask questions as we were trying to kind of figure out the process and navigate. How is it that we apply? How do we become federally designated? Nationally, there's 571 Hispanic serving institutions, and that number continues to grow exponentially. Even in the state of Arizona, you know, we've gone from 16 to 21 in a matter of a few years. In 2021, I serve as one of the co-founders to the AZ HSI Consortium, and uh, my dear colleague, friend, and co-conspirator, Dr. Ray Rivera, who serves as president of Estrella Mountain Community College is the co-founder. And it was one of those things where, you know, we had certainly met each other at certain events and I knew that he certainly was a president of an HSI. And I wanted to see what the opportunity was and gauge his interest in really providing leadership collectively, both from a four-year institution and a two-year institution in the state of Arizona to really lead this work and help bring people together as a community of practice. And so 2021, you know, we launched the AZ HSI Consortium. So this community of practice really provides an outlet, an amazing outlet to exchange best practices, really kind of problem solve together, advance and advocate for access to our institutions, support of higher education, and really communicating the value of degrees and certifications through our higher education institutions, particularly through our Arizona HSI. We've actually hosted two phenomenal statewide summits, um, and this was feedback um, that we had received early on when we had convened people. We asked them, how can this consortium really serve your own HSI in advancing your own individual and then collectively our state goals? And we actually launched the very first AZ HSI Summit in 2022. That one was held at Estrella Mount Community College and was a fantastic opportunity to bring people together. In reviewing the feedback from participants, they wanted to see more of it. They wanted it to happen every year they even asked it for it to be a multi-day experience but it was like all right let us get our foundation together let us you know kind of do this a couple of times and so last year we had the opportunity to serve as the institutional host and so we held it here in 2023 at the University of Arizona we had 23 workshops and those were workshop sessions that were actually co-presented by people across the state of Arizona. So people are bringing their expertise to the summit, engaging in the showcasing of best practices, um, and really engaging in the type of discussion and problem solving and strategizing that we want to see for the state. We even had the White House, um, so the Office of Hispanic Initiatives, come here to the University of Arizona and attend the summit. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. And we've been involved. You brought me along and introduced me to a lot of uh, incredible people across the country. But one group that uh, is very powerful is the Hispanic Serving Research Universities. That alliance uh, launched in about 2021, but there are currently 21 R1 Hispanic Serving Institutions. And what's nice about that is that particular alliance 
is really um, being led by presidents and chancellors at those respective institutions. And so you have the highest levels of leadership who have taken charge and been at the home and really kind of put a stake in the ground in terms of thinking through the commitment and the responsibility and the unique aspects of being an R1 and an HSI. How do you take those two characteristics of an institution and really find kind of the value in the nexus, right, between those two things and really amplify and, and scale those efforts. And so next month we'll be convening at UT Arlington for the first in-person summit. So really looking forward to it. We have a contingency of folks from the University of Arizona who will be attending. There's about maybe six or eight of us who will be in attendance and really looking forward to bringing things back and continuing to engage our own campus community around that work. But the work you're doing is simply tremendous and having the time to be a state leader and a national leader. I know there are 168 hours in a week, but you're, you're working very hard with limited staff and support. So uh, my hope is over the next few years, we can continue to invest in this important work you're doing. So thank you for being with me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.